shaping up to be one of the most unpredictable general elections in living memory. As the parties fight for every advantage, we bring them together for the daily politics election debates. We've been through the manifestos and now we'll put to the test some of the men and women who want to form the next government, wield influence over it and make the big decisions about the issues that will affect all of our lives after May the 7th. Welcome to the Daily Politics Election Debates of 2015. I'm Andrew Neil. Today we're focusing on education. It's an area of policy that has big implications for families up and down the country, from nurseries right the way through to universities. And today the party spokesman will be debating this key concern. Nicky Morgan is the Conservative Education Secretary. David Laws is the Schools Minister. He's a Lib Dem. James Humphreys represents the Green Party. Jonathan Arnott represents UKIP and Tristram Hunt is Labour's Shadow Education Secretary. Plus I'm joined by the BBC's Education Editor Branwyn Jeffries. In a moment our politicians will be setting out why they believe they've got the right answers in this key policy area. But first, a reminder of what's at stake. The coalition government embarked on some big reforms to schools in England, once compared by former Education Secretary Michael Gove to Mao's Long March. More than 400 free schools, which have greater freedoms than those run by local authorities, have opened since 2010. And the number of academies, first introduced under Labour, has exploded. Now 55% of all state-funded secondaries are academy schools, with primary academies following along behind. Regardless of the nature of the schools, England needs more of them, with warnings that 880,000 extra places are required over the next decade. Under the coalition, there have been significant reforms to both the national curriculum and exams in an attempt to answer charges of grade inflation. But in a competitive global market, how well equipped are children to face the challenges ahead? And are they being given the right vocational skills the economy needs? Polls show education has always been a big concern for the public as the Lib Dems learned to their cost when they went back on a manifesto promise and supported a rise in tuition fees. In the next hour, you decide which of the parties has the best plan for improving education. Well, just before we came on air, our politicians drew lots to decide the order in which they would make their pitches. Nikki Morgan was the lucky or the unlucky winner, so she goes first. Nikki Morgan, please take your position. Nikki Morgan's been Education Secretary since last summer. She took over from her at times controversial predecessor, Michael Gove. Before that, she was a minister at the Treasury. The Conservative Party has a clear plan for every part of a young person's education from nursery to graduation. That plan is simple. We want every young person, regardless of birth or background, to go on and achieve their full potential. And that plan is working. It has led to a million more pupils studying in good or outstanding schools, gold standard vocational qualifications that employers trust, and record numbers of young people from disadvantaged backgrounds securing a place at university. We've done it through high expectations for every pupil, trusting our outstanding teachers and empowering parents to demand more. In the next parliament, we're committing to making sure every child gets the benefit of these reforms and every family has an excellent local school to send their child to. Uh, Nikki Morgan, you were brought in to placate the teaching unions. They pretty much hated your predecessor, Michael Gove. So can you tell us one thing that you've done that Mr Gove wouldn't have done? Well, one of the things that I uh, picked up on very quickly on taking up the uh, Office of Secretary of State for Education was the concerns about workload. And that's why in November I launched the Workload Challenge, uh, which had a response of 44,000 uh, teachers submitted their ideas on what more we could do to support them in their very important job. And Mr Gove wouldn't have done that? Well, I think it was something that wasn't done in the first four years and something I thought very passionately needed to be done. OK, thank you. Now, David Laws has been one of the key figures in this coalition government. First as a Treasury Minister, and then for the last three years as Education Minister. He's responsible for schools. In government, the Liberal Democrats have protected the school's budget and introduced the game-changing £2.5 billion pupil premium. Now we're making the biggest financial commitment of any of the parties on education. We'll protect the whole education budget, both for prices and for pupils, 
spending two and a half billion pounds more than Labour and five billion pounds more than the Conservatives. We'll use this money to transform the quality of early years education, ensure all teachers are qualified and properly paid and deliver more one-to-one -one tuition. We would also create an independent educational standards authority to stop excessive political meddling in the curriculum. And this Liberal Democrat plan will give every child the opportunity to reach their full potential. David Laws, you've put education on the front page of your manifesto. Now, given what happened last time you made a major pledge on education, is that really wise? Why should anyone believe you? Yes, I think it is very wise, because actually the pledge we put on the front page of our last manifesto was to introduce the £2.5 billion pupil premium. We've done exactly that, and it's changing the life chances of literally millions of children across the country now. It's narrowing the gap between the life chances of advantaged and disadvantaged youngsters the biggest challenge in English education by a long way. We'll look into that as the debate goes on. David Laws, thank you. James Humphreys is representing the Greens. He used to be the party's chairman and was previously a civil servant at the Department for the Environment and at number 10. In our country, we have excellent schools. We have many skilled and committed teachers. We have leading universities, yet somehow, taken together, we just don't have a world-class education system. Uh, Underinvestment and an increasingly fragmented and divisive approach to education are letting down our young people. But it doesn't have to be that way. The Green Party's proposals are about turning the potential into reality. Th this isn't about ideology. When we talk about smaller class sizes or abolishing league tables, it's because all the evidence from this country and abroad is that this will give all our children and young people a better education. We'll put in the resources too. We're absolutely upfront that the richest in Britain would pay more in tax and we would use this to fund education properly from early years right through to further and higher education. And by doing this we can give all our children the education they deserve. Uh, James Humphreys, I, I see that you're an accomplished writer of fiction. Uh, was that useful in helping you to write the Greens' education policies? No, not at all. I mean, I, I, I expected you to come in on money. I didn't expect you to come in on, on novels. But we have looked at this very, very carefully in terms of the numbers that support uh, our policies, uh, the financial backing that we have, where we would make the investment and how we would fund that. But we've also, as I said, we've looked very carefully at what has worked best in the UK, what's worked best internationally, and our proposals are based firmly on that, not ideology, but what works best for our children. All right, thank you. Jonathan Arnott is a UKIP MEP for the North East of England. He's standing for election as an MP in May, and he's a former maths teacher. When I was a teacher, my best successes weren't always the A-star grade students. It was often the children who were inspired, those who achieved a C, D or E grade, which was beyond all expectations. Government policy has resulted in 60-hour working weeks for teachers because of endless paperwork. But I believe it's paperwork. But I believe we must put our children first. UKIP believes in an education system with different kinds of schools, catering to our children's unique needs, driving excellence in all its forms and developing the skills we need. Like in Germany, there should be no stigma attached to becoming a plumber instead of going to university. And we need to listen to the needs of business to help our young people find jobs when they leave education. Jonathan Arnott, you sat your GCSEs three years early, your A-levels three years early, and you were studying mathematics at university by 15, by the time you were 15. So you're a math genius. Uh, so why don't the UKIP sums add up? Well, our sums absolutely do add up, uh, Andrew, as, uh, as I'm sure you're aware, because we are the only party at this election whose manifesto has been independently costed by a respected think tank, the Centre for Economics and Business Research. OK, thank you for that. Tristram Hunt is Labour's Shadow Education Secretary. It's a job he's held since 2013, and he's also been a lecturer in modern British history. Before I came into politics, I was, as Andrew said, a lecturer in London's East End. I experienced the joy and commitment of teaching firsthand. I saw the power of education to unleash opportunity in some of our poorest communities. So that's what a Labour government wants for all our young people. We've got three priorities. Tackling inequality by reviving Sure Start and delivering 25 hours free childcare. 
raising school standards with a world-class teacher for every classroom, delivering modern skills for real jobs with top quality apprenticeships, and for those young people who want to go on to university, a cut in tuition fees from £9,000 a year to £6,000 a year. The Labour Party will always support our education system, and that is why we will also protect the entire education budget in real terms. Tristram Hunt, let me quote from your manifesto. Give every young person that gets the grades has the right to a high-quality apprenticeship. Why should we trust our children's education to a party whose manifesto is littered with typos, spelling and grammatical mistakes? Well, this is a very, very important uh, issue, Andrew, and one of the issues facing the education system is continuity. So rather than a government coming in, chopping and changing everything that's happened in the recent past, adding to the workload challenge, we'll keep the SPAG test. We'll keep the spelling, punctuation and grammar so that in the future manifestos flow as beautifully as Michael Young's 1945 manifesto did. Uh, so we want rigour and excellence in the education system. Very well, I'm not sure I understood that, but never mind. Let's well, get on. We, we will give you, <laughs> as part of our education system, we will give you a re-education, Andrew. That will be an, a, a priority we can also deliver on. Uh, I can hardly wait. Time uh, now for our three parties to make um, uh, the debate, all the parties here. Let's get on with this uh, debate. And we're going to begin and spend most of our time this afternoon on schools. Now, David Laws, your manifesto is basically a string of criticism about the government's schools policy. Could you remind me who the school's minister is? Well, I am now, and I'm very proud of a terrific number of things that we've delivered in the department. We've delivered the pupil premium, which I was talking about a, a moment ago, from the front page of our uh, Liberal Democrat manifesto last time round. I think it's been the best po education policy that this coalition government has delivered. We've delivered more early years opportunities for two-year-olds from disadvantaged So families. why do you make all these criticisms of well, government because, policy? Because in coalition, both sides in the coalition won't get everything that they want. And of course, when you then have to, uh, a, a general election mm. and you put forward your own programme, it won't necessarily be hamstrung what, by some of the things you have. What would Nicky Morgan give you that you wanted? What would she give me? What wouldn't Nicky Morgan give you that you, that well, you wanted? Well, I, I would have thought one of the huge problems for the Conservative Party next time round, uh, whether they're in government by themselves or with other people, will be funding. Today we've had the Institute for Fiscal Studies, as you know. No, no, what I'm, what I'm asking you is what wouldn't she give you in government that you wanted as schools minister? Oh, there were quite a number of things where there were differences between the two of us. OK, well, let's and, have one. Uh, I think that one of the things that we, that we disagreed on was holding academy chains to account. I, I supported the chief inspector for schools who wanted basically to have Ofsted be able to hold academy chains to account in the same way as he can local authorities. He made that case. Both Michael Gove and Nicky took a different view. Why wouldn't, you, why wouldn't you do that, uh, Nicky Morgan? Because um, at the end of the day, what the schools inspector is about is about looking at schools. And there seemed to be some sort of uh, thinking that actually by going into a, a head office or looking at uh, uh, somebody's files, you're going to find out what's going on in the school. There's nothing to stop Ofsted asking an academy sponsor or an academy chain when they're inspecting a school and they can inspect other schools in that chain. What do you do to support this school in terms of making learning better? But, you know, I think the honest answer uh, to what David says is there wasn't a great uh, deal of difference. Mm. And actually, I do find it puzzling in this election campaign that the Lib Dems, particularly in relation to education, I think we've got a great record in education over the last five years. A million more pupils in schools rated good or outstanding. I think the Lib Dems should be standing up for well, their we record. Are, we are standing up for a tremendous amount that we achieved. A bit. At the beginning of the government, um, George Osborne actually wanted to cut uh, schools funding. He wanted to freeze it in cash terms. We said no to that. We are at this uh, in this okay. general election, arguing the case for extra money. Okay. This thing about uh, accountability and Ofsted is not a small thing. It's about the whole way in which you hold schools to account and make sure there's an improvement. We took the same view as the chief inspector for schools, and I'm sorry that the other side of the coalition didn't. I think All you've right. got to drive up standards. You've got to allow Ofsted to look at these things. Dicky Morgan, free schools are at the forefront of uh, your manifesto for this election. But they score rock bottom in the public's opinion of this government's education policies. What... Why do you have a flagship policy that so few people like? 
Well, I think it's partly one of the things I've done since coming into uh, office has been very much about explaining what our whole plan for education has been about. And when you explain uh, to parents and, and others what the opportunities that free schools offer, so the opportunity not just to accept what you're given in terms of educational places available, which is what the Labour Party would like parents to put up with what they're given, but to say, no, I'm not happy, I want to set up a new school in an area. And what we're finding, actually, is schools are being set up in areas where places